Good morning, and a very warm welcome to this, our special Remembrance Day service. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us, though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memories we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of all humanity. Those from the parish of Rotherfield who fell during the First World War. Walter Coomber, Frederick Bulldog, Ernest Diplock, Richard Mitchell, Roland Tester, Frederick Bliss, James Clevett, David Peerless, Henry Thorpe. Spencer Wickens, Joseph Wallace, Alfred Martin, Harry Smith, Benjamin Joy, Jack Hope, William Beale, Eric Price, Gilbert Wilson, Cyril Maskell, John Weston, Owen Holmwood, George Longley, George Mins, Thomas Page, Charles Potter, Alfred Turner, Iden Bishop, Douglas Joy, Herbert Maskell, Walter Harmon, Francis Wilson, Philip Paley, Albert Rogers, Frank Broombridge, Walter Homewood, Herbert Berry, Leonard Francis, George Hope, Edward Bassett, Howard Bronwyn, Spencer Diplock, James Bailey, Harry Clark, George Packham, Jesse Wilson. Those from the parish of Mark Cross who fell during the First World War. Arnold Ball, James Clevett, Joseph Groombridge, Herbert Harmon, William Jeffrey, George Longley, Percy Richard, Edwin Wicker, Frank Wicker. Those from the parish of Rotherfield who fell during the Second World War. Joseph Bonds, John Brooker, Frederick Grantham, Albert Hall, Michael Miller, David Mintz, Peter Stevens, Rodney Wilkinson, Ronald Woodward, Dennis Alabaster. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. 
at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. 
Fulfill in them the purpose of thy love, and bring us all with them to thine eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bible reading is taken from John chapter 15, reading from verse 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
together most merciful God we confess that we have sinned in thought word and deed we have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves in your mercy forgive what we have been help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly love mercy and walk humbly with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for all those who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish, and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. underlines their importance to Jesus as he prepares his disciples for his death and all that is about to happen to him. Jesus is about to lay down his life on the cross, not only for his friends, but for all people everywhere throughout all time. So let's think about those two words. First of all, abide. Many Bible translators use the word remain rather than abide. But in the context of what Jesus is saying to his disciples, abide is a much more fitting word, I think. To abide is to accept or to act in accordance with. Or when used in connection with a feeling or a memory, abide is to continue without fading or being lost. We might say, at least one memory will abide. And in olden days, to abide was to live or to dwell somewhere. Now when Jesus asked his disciples to abide in him, he wasn't ordering them to remember him in a way that was heavy or ill-fitting, because he knew full well of their love for him. He knew that after his death, they would naturally abide in his memory, in his teaching, not because of any compulsion, but because of their love for him. Jesus gave his disciples a tangible occasion to remember him. It was a meal. Whenever they were meeting to eat together, in a time when bread and wine was the staple of every meal, Whenever they ate bread and drank wine, together they would remember Jesus. They would remember his loving sacrifice. As a nation at this time of the year, we naturally turn our thoughts towards remembering all those who gave their lives in battle. We abide in this collective remembering 
not through compulsion, but willingly. We abide in and hold dear the collective memory which is being passed down from one generation to the next, so that it will not fade, it will not be lost. In the same way that bread and wine directs Christians to look to Jesus, nationally war memorials and poppies direct our thoughts towards the sacrifice of those who gave their lives who are now mostly unknown to us. We stop today to remember, lest we forget. Lest we forget are somewhat familiar words. They're inscribed on war memorials and British Legion flags. Whenever I drive into Heathfield, I'm driving past at the moment a flag that has poppies, a silhouette of soldiers and the words, lest we forget. Now these words are borrowed from Rudyard Kipling's poem called Recessional. It first appeared in July 1897, just in time for the end of Queen Victoria's Diamonds Jubilee. And in it, Kipling was expressing his concerns that both in times of war and peace that God not be forgotten. Here's the first stanza to give you a flavour of his work. God of our fathers, known of old, Lord of our far-flung battle line, beneath whose awful hand we hold dominion over palm and pine. Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget. Moving on from thinking about abiding, let's just think for a few moments about love. The very same Gospel writer John later wrote in one of his letters, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for others, for our brothers and sisters. Love always involves some degree of sacrifice. It may be the ultimate sacrifice of laying down our life as Jesus and those we remember today. Or more often than not, it's some other way of laying down ourselves, our time or our resources, in preference for another person. Love is always costly. It's natural on this day of remembering to call to mind those who died fighting in wars to overcome inhumanity and injustice. We plainly see their love. They marched towards trouble for us. But others too must not be overlooked. There was an entire generation whose sacrifice was costly. There were sweethearts, husbands, wives, children, families, all parted. Some for years until being reunited after the war. Others for a lifetime when their loved ones didn't ever return. Many people returned home different, scarred mentally and physically. And we remember today all in the armed forces currently serving and those who have died in more recent conflicts. Love is always costly. I sincerely hope that we will not be required to love as those we remember today have loved us. But surely their sacrifice invites us to respond with love in our time and in our context. Paul, another writer of letters in the Bible, writes at this about the character of love. You may recognise these words. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. In the same way as the disciples, without any effort on their part, have been drawn into the Father's love through Jesus, 
So today, we partake in the love of millions unknown to us who have laid down their lives. Those who for our tomorrow gave their today. May we live our lives in their legacy. Our knowledge of their efforts and sacrifice for us implores us to love one another in order that justice and peace might prevail. Our knowledge of their efforts and sacrifices for us implores us to respond in abiding to keep their memory alive in order that it will not fade or ever be lost. and comfort others 
and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you.